Hello, welcome. This is the first episode of our Happy Heat Pump podcast. Um, you probably haven't come here by accident. If you have, this is all about heat pumps. You may be installing one, you may be interested in net zero, you may be interested in just an enormous transition in home heating that looks very probably likely to descend upon our nation over the next two and a half decades. I'm Evan Davis. I am with Bean Beanland, director of the Heat Pump Federation, and we're here to talk heat pumps. And we thought today we should start by talking about what they are. And um, Bean, you know, I find it very easy if you explain to people it's an electric heater. Everybody gets that. Um, but people do, I think, eyes glaze over a bit when you say heat pump. And I'm, I'm interested in whether you have a kind of patter to explain what we're actually talking about when we say heat pump. Well, look, most people don't really like the description of it being a fridge running in reverse. But fundamentally, in your own home, people will understand the concept of what's inside your fridge is cold. And if you put your hand around the back, it's warm. You can feel the heat. So that does actually, I think, connect people with the idea, the concepts. Um, we're just doing exactly the same in reverse. So we're scavenging some uh, what is in fact stored solar energy. Uh, and the heat pump does exactly what it says on the tin. It pumps the heat. Right. Uh, look, let's get start this. The physics bit is rather than heating something with a filament, I mean, it might have a filament in actually, but rather than heating with a filament, a heat pump is compressing some gas and make it hot. So it's compressing yeah. rather than heating something. Yeah, so we will call it gas compression. So from your days in, uh, in the physics classroom, you'll remember that you can't compress a solid, you can't compress a liquid, but you can compress a gas. And when you compress the gas, it gets hot. And the other evidence from your school days is when you stop to buy a pump up your bicycle tire, you inevitably you put your thumb over the end and you go, and whoa, hot. It's hot because when yeah. you compress the gas, it becomes yeah. hot. Okay, so the essence of a heat pump is it's going to have a big piece that will compress some gas, a compressor, compresses the gas and makes it hot. And then you take that heat and you heat something with it, like water, let's say, yep. which you can run through your radiators, let's say. Yeah. And that's your heating system. Indeed. Yeah. So the, the box itself has two heat exchangers, the compressor where you do all the work, which is where we use the electricity, uh, and, a, uh, and a return valve, which just takes the pressure off. And it's a completely sealed, hermetically sealed circuit in the factory. So domestic units are very, very... Um, uh, tight in that. Regard. Okay, now, okay, so you've got a compression thing. You heat, you heat some water with your compressed gas. The compressed gas is now cold because it's, the heat's gone into the water to heat your house. Yeah, the gas, as it goes through the circuit, when it goes through the second heat exchanger and transfers the thermal energy, the heat, into your hot water cylinder or into your radiator circuit or underfloor heating, whatever you might be using, it's clearly losing heat at that point. So it's cooling down, but it doesn't return to its liquid state until you take the pressure off it again, which is what the expansion valve does. Right. So you decompress it. Correct. That's it. Now, I want the magic bit because I, I, we, we've got to get to the magic bean. We need to tell people about the magic because you can now decompress it and it's very cold, right? Below zero. And now, magically, if you're, you can put it outside... And you can use the ambient temperature of the air. Let's say the air is 10. You can use that ambient air to heat up the gas or to make it gas again if it's turned into liquid. To, to, yeah. to make it gas. Exactly. That's what you're doing. You're, you're, you're eva evaporating it effectively. So you're turning it back into gas. So you can then compress it. And then you compress it again. Correct. Yeah. But the outside air yeah. has done some of the work for you. That's where you're getting the bulk of the thermal energy from. So... The magic, if you'd like to you know, call it magic, I think it's, a, it, it's, it's certainly a poetic piece of physics. Uh, it's magic or not, it's certainly poetic. Um, is that you, uh, you're harvesting thermal energy, which is actually stored solar energy, and it's stored in the air or in the ground or in, the, in water. Uh, you are using that to effectively boil the refrigerant. And once it's a gas, you can compress it. Again. So you use a little bit of electricity in your compressor and you're effectively, think of it as a combine harvester. You're harvesting naturally occurring thermal energy in the environment, uh, and you're then putting it into your 
storage, radiators, hot water cylinder, whatever it might be. So compress, heat, yep. take the heat, put it into your heating system, yep. decompress, cool, let nature heat it up again to some extent, and then compress again, Correct. rinse and repeat, yep. and that's your heating system. Exactly that. Okay. So now, um, and the magic is you are using outdoor temperatures to heat your your magic material that is going to turn into gas and do a lot of the work. Right. The next really important question is, how do I get heat from outside, from in the air, say, if it's minus five? So there is thermal energy in air down to absolute zero. Absolute zero is minus 273. So there is thermal energy stored in air at sub-zero temperatures. Uh, and there's enough of it. As long as we can boil the refrigerant, so the refrigerants by and large, will boil at around about minus 15, minus 20. So, these so as long as our temperature is higher than that, and clearly if you've got dev uh, devices which are destined to work in, you know, significant sub-zero temperatures, you know, Scandinavia is full of them, the refrigerants will be chosen appropriately. So as long as there's enough the temperature outside to boil the refrigerant in the circuit, the heat bomb will run. Okay. Obviously, it's nicer if it's hot outside because you can... Of course. You can, um, yeah. it does more heating for you. It, 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 it yeah. puts more so pressure in the gas. One of, one of the efficiency measures is the difference, or one of the um, factors that influences the efficiency is what we call the difference between the source temperature outside and the sink temperature, i.e. the temperature we're trying to make in order to get to the right temperature in your radiators or in your hot water cylinder. So that differential in temperature has an impact on the efficiency of the machine. Okay, so I'm with you. So now we just want to help people categorize these a little bit because the basic categorization is where you're getting the outdoor heat, nature's heat, which is going to help you. Yeah. And you can do it from the air outside and you can do it from water outside. If you stick something into the ground, you can go down to the aquifer and get that. Yep. All surface water, lakes, rivers. You can do it from lakes and rivers. Yeah. Okay. And then there are different ways of heating on the inside. Most people have got radiators that pump water around them, basically. Yeah, most people in the UK are very used to having what we call a hydronic system. So it's delivered by water, radiators, underfloor heating uh, in their homes. And there's you know, people in the UK are slightly snobbish about such things. In the rest of the world, there seems to be a much higher comfort level at saying we're going to use blown heat. A blown air to deliver the heat. So you could have units on the wall yep. that basically have a fan in and the heat goes into that and that's how you get it in. So let's use some terms, really really basic terms. Air to air means you're getting air heat outside and you're blowing it inside. Yep. Air to water means it's the air that's heating your system outside. And it's water, it's uh, running water in radiators inside, for example. Yep, radiators, underfloor heating, fan cores. Water to air means you're getting it from the water outside, from a lake or from the, from the aquifer. And water to water would be getting it from water and passing it around in water. So that's, it's basically what go, how you're heating it up outside. Yeah. And how you, and how you deliver it. Deliver it inside. Sign. And all of it, though, is compressing gas, decompressing it. All the technologies are working exactly the same way. Which, by the way, is how your fridge works. Yeah. Okay. Very helpful. All right. Now, Bean, there's a very interesting thing that people quote when they're talking about heat pumps. And you're going to explain it now. The coefficient of performance, which I think is a measure of what you're getting out relative to what you're putting in, energy in, energy out. Talk me through that. Yeah, so coefficient of performance is what most people consider to be the measure of the efficiency of the device as opposed to the system, and you know, that, that's a, a different thing in itself. So the, the COP, coefficient of performance, is the ratio between the amount of electricity you put into the compressor, which is where we're using most of the electricity, in kilowatt hours? Yeah. Yeah, in kilowatt hours. And the amount of thermal energy in kilowatt hours that we get out into our radiators, underfloor heating, hot water cylinder. And we are looking for that ratio to be as high as possible. But COP is just an instantaneous measure. Okay. So but let's be clear. If, uh, 
a, a COP, a reasonable COP is three, three or four is normal. Three to four. I mean, if you look at some of the really best performing systems, you might be getting something way above four, but three to four, good average install. Three to four means I'm buying a kilowatt hour of electricity, using it to compress gas, and I'm getting three to four kilowatt hours of thermal energy out. What, what am I getting from a gas boiler out of interest? So most gas condensing boilers will have a, a boiler plate number that is an efficiency around 94 to 92, 94%, something like that. I buy a kilowatt hour equivalent of gas yeah, and I get 0.94 of a kilowatt hour of heat out. So in terms of primary energy efficiency, heat pumps completely outperform gas. And that does assume that the gas boiler is in condensing mode. That's another question. Well, that's, that's getting, getting beyond the scope of this. But just to be clear, then that means, you know, you are, you are getting a lot of bang for your buck if your system is working correctly. Indeed you are. That's why it's magic. And where you're getting that extra two from, if it's, you're buying one and getting three, buy one, get, get, get three. Yeah. Get three, get two free. Um, if you are doing that, it's because nature's doing quite a lot of the work, heavy lifting for you in the heating process. We are making use of the energy that the sun gives us. All right, Bingma, look, that's probably a good point at which to finish it. I think that's the most physics we'll do in any of these uh, podcast episodes. But to sum up, you can harvest energy from outside, heat energy, and there are lots of ways of doing that. And you can bring it inside and deliver it to the home. And there are lots of ways of doing that. Don't get too caught up on the detail. Lots to talk about in the world of heat pumps and we shall talk about it on the Happy Heat Pump podcast. Do subscribe, like, comment, email us at happyheatpumppod at gmail.com, happyheatpumppod at gmail.com. And next time we'll be looking at how do you use a heat pump.